All right, gonna prove to you that there is distinction and separation in the Godhead. And this is gonna be a refutation of modalism and oneness, the heresy of modalism and Pentecostal oneness doctrine. And I'm gonna show you from the scriptures that there is clearly distinction and separation in the Godhead. The Godhead can separate. Let me show you some proof on that from the scriptures. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Here's a good one that proves that there, the Son of God can separate from God the Father. Uh, who is he that commandeth? Is it Christ that died? Yea, rather, that, it, that is risen again. Sorry, again, I, I'm not good at reading stuff on a computer, so that's why I stutter sometimes. Uh, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us. This verse proves two things. First of all, it refutes Roman Catholicism, the doctrine that Mary intercedes for us, because it says that Christ intercedes for us. And you know, it says that he maketh intercession for us, and it also proves that there's distinction in the Godhead, because he says he's at the right hand of God. Very, very clear scripture right there. Luke chapter 20, or 3. I have my notes on the side right there. Luke chapter 3, verse 21. Let me go down. Luke chapter 3, verse 20, or 21. And when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, uh, the heaven was open, verse 22, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. So here's, again, we see a distinction in the Godhead. Jesus is baptized. The Son of God is on earth being baptized. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, comes down, descends down like a dove. And the Father is up in heaven saying, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. There is separation in the Godhead. There is distinction and separation. The Godhead can separate. So it refutes this modalist heresy of, Oh, there's no separation in the Godhead. Matthew chapter 3. I have my notes on the side. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. Uh, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened up, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Verse 17, and a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Again, Jesus, the Son of God, is baptized. The Holy Ghost comes down. The Spirit of God comes down, descending like a dove. And the Father is up in heaven. The God, the Father, is up in heaven saying, This is my Son, in whom I am well pleased. There is separation in the Godhead, clearly. Uh, let me show you some more verses on Jesus being at the right hand of God the Father. Acts chapter 7, verse 55, it says, And being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfast, I'll start at verse 54, uh, And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Verse 55, And he, being filled with the Holy Ghost, looked steadfastly into heaven, and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Verse 56, And said, Behold, I see the heavens open up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Again, the Son, the Son of God is at the right hand of God the Father. Son of Man is another title for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, at the right hand of God. There is distinction and separation, clearly. It refutes this mortalist heresy of, oh, there's no separation in the Godhead. And it refutes oneness, too. Uh, Acts chapter... Uh, actually, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. Colossians 3, verse number 1. Uh, and if ye be risen with Christ... Or, yeah, if, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are up above, where Christ sitteth at the, on the right hand of God. Christ is at the right hand of God. Separation. The Son of God can separate from God the Father. There, there's not this thing of, oh, you know, the the God is one and he just manifests of the, the Father and Son, you know, the Holy Ghost. It's ridiculous, nutty nonsense. There is, I mean, if you're a modalist out there, how do you explain these verses? The Son of God is at the right hand of God the Father. So, if you're a modalist and you think that God just is in different modes, so are, is one mode at the right hand of the other mode? It's ridiculous. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. And I do apologize, I am sick, so... Apologies, Mr. Nickley. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hmm. Jesus is the author of our faith. Hmm. Not uh, the Roman Catholic Church or the one true church. Uh, who for the glory uh, that was set before him endured, to the, endured the cross, despising the same, and is set at the right hand of the throne of God. Again, Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. There is clearly a separation there. Acts chapter 2. Verse 32 to 33. Acts chapter 2. Verse 32 to 33. 
this Jesus hath God raised up, where whereof we are all the wit we are all our witnesses. Sorry. Again, I, I'm not good at reading stuff on a computer. So again, Jesus is raised up by God, the Son of God raised up by God the Father. Very, very clear. Verse 33, Therefore being at the right hand of God, exalted, and having received the Father from the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed for us, uh, which ye now see and hear. Because again, in the book of Acts, they're doing sign gifts and everything. Again, Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father. If you're a one that's Pentecostal, how do you answer that? There is separation in the Godhead. So this is uh, my video refuting oneness modalism. There's a bunch of other scriptures back in the Old Testament where, you know, God says in the book of Genesis, let us make man in our image. You know, again, just scripture after scripture debunks the modalist heresy and the oneness heresy. So anyway, thank you for watching. God bless you. Goodbye.